Hi guys, just a quick build video today. I wanted to show you how I've made this tape dispenser to keep my tape off my work surfaces and onto my wall where it's easily accessible when I need it to grab but not scattered around everywhere where I can't find them. The solution is from an A4 sheet of ply, a hacksaw blade and a lollipop stick. Yes, I know a lollipop stick but my kids go through these like hot dinners and I may as well make use of them. So let's show you how I've come about a better solution than this. This is just a prototype. Yeah, I made a better version. Check it out. Let's get into it. This project started life in light mode. I then moved on to my laser cutter. But before I cut out the final file, I had to test out a few things to make sure they were correct. The first thing I had to test out was the curve compensation for how the joints would fit together. To make sure I did not affect the rest of the file with the holes and other fit, I only compensated on the curve on the square holes for the joints to fit correctly. I tried zero curve compensation, a plus 0.1 compensation and a minus 0.05 compensation. As you will hear from the noise, I found that the 0.05 was the best fit going forward so that everything had a snug precision uh, accuracy to it. The other reason for this test piece was so that I could ensure that the nut fitted into the T slot and the joint fitted together and that the bolt would fit through the hole correctly. This all worked really well and I was really happy with the joint. Now the second thing I had to test out was tabs. Now this is something I've never dealt with before on Lightburn. But the basics of it is, is you select where you want the laser to not cut and it leaves little tabs in select positions of a certain size. Now I've never done this before on this thickness so I had to test out what size tabs I wanted. The first tab test was 0.2 of a millimetre. Now you can see that pushed out quite easily. And here you can see the little remains of the tabs on the sides that were just holding on to the material to stop it falling out. The next one's 0.3, and you can see tapping it, it didn't fall out. And it needed a good firm push to get out, but just enough that there's and only a little piece of material left on the side, on the edge of the push out. The third tab size was 0.4 and now this took some doing to push out. So much so, I actually lost the part. Where'd that go? But anyway, as you can see, it's pushed out a bit too much. These tabs are ever so slightly too big and I didn't want remains of the material left on the edges. So 0.3 it is. Right, now that's all dialed in, let's get into actually making it. So here we go, I've decided to put a more embellished pattern on the side of it. I just wanted to just give it that bit more lift and it gave me a chance to play about on Inkscape and try and make some flourishes on it that I'd never done before. I also added a little scoop so that you can get your fingers round the tape to lift it out and also made a solid panel for my logo to fit on the front. So as I said at the beginning, this was based around an A4 sheet. Now the idea of this is so that I could put it in the post and mail it to people 
without having to assemble it and it could be a little self-assembly kit that you can pop out and then assemble yourself at home. This kit was then based around both tape sizes. So this, as you'll see, has slightly too many parts. The idea of this was it meant that you could send it as one kit and the user could pick which size tape dispenser they were building. On this design, I've chose to make it for the larger tape as to that's the dispenser I need. So we'll put the small parts aside and now we're ready to assemble for the larger masking tape. Assembling the unit is fairly straightforward. All you've got to do is insert the nut, fit it together and then just fit the screw into it to hold it. Once all the connecting parts are attached to one side, this is where you can then just home down the uh, other side into the joints. As you can see, the snug joints worked out really well. Once it's been lightly tapped together, you then add the rest of the nuts in and the screws and tighten all these down and make sure everything's all secure and snug and firmly put together. Once the main body is all assembled, the next stage is to glue together the centre section to hold the tape. To do this, I roughly put everything into position and marked the down where I needed it to be to make sure that when it was glued, it would all be in the right place. To make the tape holder the correct size, you can see here I'm using the cutouts from the side sections to use as spacers to get the right spacing. There we go, all of it's complete and ready to go. Except the fact that I've got no way of cutting the tape. I'll end up all in a muddle. Okay, uh, swiftly moving on, uh, yeah, there's me sharpening up the old hacksaw blade just to give it a bit of an edge so that I can cut through the tape and not end up in the muddle. go all done hope you guys enjoyed the video if you've got any questions about uh, the joints that I've used or how I got my curve compensation right check out my other videos at the end of this thanks for watching <laughs>